Hey everybody, welcome to Sama. I'm Derek Mazzoni. So glad to have everybody here. It is continuing to be an interesting time in the Western world, and we're focusing on music from all over the globe to help people heal, to help people deal with their um, the uncertainties, and also to highlight amazing artists from all over the globe who are doing phenomenal work, especially at a particular time, as we obviously know, where a lot of stages are shut down, even though in certain countries things have opened up a little bit, especially in Europe. Now it looks like they're coming back, closing up again. So we're going to be in this for a little while. So this particular way, this this uh, this sharing of um, of art, I think, is really really important. Okay, so today I have a special guest in um, on Sama. Uh, her name is Farah Siraj, and she's named Jordan's musical ambassadress. Um, she balances a career that spans the United States, Europe, Middle East. She's performed at some of the world's most prestigious platforms, including the United Nations, Nobel Prize Hall, the World Economic Forum, the Kennedy Center in DC, Lincoln Center and MTV. She's also been at Coke Studios in India, which is an amazing platform that I'll talk about uh, in future uh, Sama episodes. She also represents Jordan annually on the United Nations World Peace Day. I love Jordan. I've been to Amman um, uh, a few times and I've done some great work here, and it is absolutely awesome right now to have Farah Siraj here on Sama. Hi. Hello. 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 Thanks How's for having going? me. Oh, anytime, anytime. You do beautiful work. Um, so uh, even outside of that, it's just great to have somebody who's actually producing. We're gonna we're going to be uh, finishing this particular uh, episode of Sama with a brand new track called Kalma that you just um, you're just released and also you're going to be performing some live work with us here and you you combine arabic and flamenco music and um we talked uh, just recently about how you know things have pivoted obviously i hate saying this because it's so obvious to everybody mm -hmm. and so you know songs that are all about i think it's awesome and we're doing all this it's like not really working that much anymore uh, what what you know? It's time for musicians and artists to kind of find a way to help people, help themselves, and create this sense of community globally. Can you speak to that a little bit? Like, I'm, I'm curious, and I always ask this with many artists: is like, how you doing? How you coping? Are you um, in a bubble, or are you uh, coming out right now and trying to transform this? What's going on? That's a really great question. And you're right. Everything has changed. Everything is different. Nothing's the same um, for anyone, musicians or non-musicians, right? Um, and I mean, for me personally, I was supposed to be on tour this year almost nonstop. And <laughs> I've never been more home in my life. Um, yeah. And so for me, I think my Bedouin roots kind of have just really um, been making me feel like I need to move, right? Um, but I've also had to, I've been forced to re-examine um, what it means to center myself when I'm only able to be where I can be at a certain time. And that kind of restriction also allows for a lot of creativity, even though I may not be always conscious of it. Um, but you're right, even what we're writing is, is different than what we were writing yeah, before coronavirus hit. Um, yeah. It's a very different time. And, um, you know, Calma, the song that uh, we just released, um, which is a collaboration between myself, Andreas Arnold and Adam Malouf, is about that. It's about finding your center, about trying to find stillness in this crazy world, right? So when it's was, different. <laughs> when was the song... Um initially uh, composed? Like, was, was this going on when you were composing this, or was it beforehand? No, it was not. Um, and so Andreas and I were working on the song um, before coronavirus hit, and we actually mm -hmm. went into uh, the United Palace Theater in New York at a time where it was impossible to, to have an empty theater like that. I mean, it's a beautiful, gorgeous theater, and to record a music video there, um, it looks like so current because now all theaters are empty or most yeah. theaters are empty. Um, but at that time, we had a one and a half hour window um, to record, go in, record everything live and the video, the music, everything was recorded live. And then um, 
the song actually took on a new meaning when we found ourselves needing to find our center again in the middle of this 2020 chaos. Perfect. So it so was almost kind of predestined to come to the light at a time where I felt that and where we felt that, you know, it was needed some sonic when, calm. When, um, so I get this a lot. A lot of artists are like, okay, I was planning on a tour. I'm not doing a tour anymore. Sometimes it's even, you know, more dramatic. I was actually planning on getting paid for this tour. Like, you know, I invested in everything from tickets to um, a van per se. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure coming with this. And it's not just economic, and it's it's also your identity as an artist is to be traveling, is to be able to share this um, to your audience on stage at the same time. Now, you are actually sharing, you know, where we're, we have an audience and uh, we're online and we're still presenting and we're still um, sharing this work, but the audience is different. The audience is, you know, it's not intimate, but it's also interesting because it's global. You know, it's like right. you don't, you, you, you kind of have to repivot and rethink of the way that you're presenting and you're thinking of the way people are interacting with your work. Now, an artist such as yourself that combines, you know, interesting styles that have legacy Arabic music, flamenco music that always speak to emotions. You know, fundamentally, it's it's not uh, uh, it's not dry. There's, the songs are about the heart. Fundamentally, it's about like how am I feeling? This very emotional quality to it. How are you um, thinking of yourself as an artist, knowing that this is the screen now, and that you know you not know when you're going to be back in front of an audience? Um, are you thinking about that at all, or is that just am I the first one to bring it up? And you're like, "What's up?" No, absolutely, yeah. Like we said, everything's changed, and I mean, there's a lot of downfalls to us not being able to be in theaters and sharing that intimate experience with audiences, right? Um, because that connection is so strong, and and just being on stage for me, that's like you know where I most feel alive and and home, if you will. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but what is interesting about this is that through these live streams that I've been doing, and I've been grateful to have a lot of uh, live streams in this time, um, is what's been interesting is I've been able to connect with my audience in all different time zones that, yeah. you know, and also be performing for people in Jordan, in Spain, in India, in the US, in Argentina, you know, in Australia at the same time and have people from all over the world tuning in, which obviously could never happen in real life in a theater. So mm -hmm. it's brought on a different aspect, you know, um, which has been also very inspiring. Um, and it's allowed a more um, personal, um, element where I can actually chat with the audience, I can read their questions, I can, you know, I can uh, interact in real time with somebody who's maybe so far away and who I may never have performed for in person and they get to have that experience and I get to have it too. So yeah, um, there's definitely been a lot of um, downfalls to this uh, downsides, but there's also been some silver linings, and that's been yeah. one of them. Yeah, some learnings. Let's hear some music. You're gonna you're you're performing sure. our, the first song, uh, Kuluha Biladi. What does that translate as? Kuluha Biladi means um, it's all my home. Uh, ah. This song I actually uh, based on uh, 12th century poem lyrics from uh, Abu Salt al Andalusi, who um, in exile wrote a poem that, and in Arabic it says, um, if I am of the earth, then everywhere is my home and everyone is my family. And that's been kind of my personal motto for the longest Perfect. time, ever since I read that poem. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So that's I want to share this and dedicate it to everyone who's watching, wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Kullu biladi.
تشق على That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you so much. Um, what got you into music? What was the start? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, I feel like music chose me. Um, my mom had me starting piano lessons when I was like three years old. And Damn, uh, I was hooked. I know. And actually, you know, I mean... I would imagine for any parent, you know, starting piano lessons when or music lessons when their kid is three years old, there's nothing really that you, you're not really even knowing if they're getting anything out of it that could mm -hmm. help them in the future, right? Or, or like, who would, have, who would know what the outcome would be? But basically, um, that combined with me being in a child, children choir um, for a Lebanese singer who is um, also uh, very young, um, I was on stage with her um, in the choir when I was three years old, and um, I just wouldn't get off the stage. Oh, wow, and you so were hooked. My, yeah, I was hooked. I was like, this is amazing. I want to do this. And so I just kept going. And then the next, like I, the year later when I was four, I was on stage playing piano and singing in French, which I didn't, La Vie en Rose was the first song I ever performed, like, my my own self like okay. on stage and i didn't speak french i just learned the lyrics and i was singing them and ever since then i just like that was something that just brought me so much happiness and i think my family knew especially my mom uh knew that this was something i wanted to just have in my life um and you know i don't think they ever imagined that that would be my profession mm -hmm. but Looking back, yeah, you collect, you connect the dots, and you see, yeah, that was very clear. How did flamenco come into your world? Ah, that's interesting. So um, my family moved to Spain when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I didn't speak Spanish or anything. And I got there, and I was like, "This is such a beautiful country, and people are so nice, and they're like us. They're like, you know, they're like Arabs. You know, they're so sweet and warm and." And um, I just felt really like very home in that sense. That's also why the song Kula Biladi, why that, why that poem resonates so much with me. Um, but um, my, sorry about that. Um, okay. What happened is <laughs> that almost feels like a background music. Uh, to exactly. The, to Let's talk about your home now. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. And so when I listened to flamenco, I heard we attended a flamenco show for the first time and I was just blown away and it, mm -hmm. it there were so many similarities with Arabic music that it didn't feel foreign, um, if that makes sense. 
No, no, it's well, it's the Moors, and yeah, and uh, I also discovered some of my own family heritage that came from Spain, from Granada, the Avencerrajes, which Aven um, in Arabic means, you know, a son of or tribe of, and Cerrajes mm -hmm. is the Spanish uh, word for Siraj. Um, so I kind of also discovered some of my heritage there. Oh wow! And I just just fell in love with flamenco. Um, after studying at Berklee College of Music um, in Boston, I decided that I wanted to um, learn flamenco singing. So not so that I could become a flamenco singer, because I was I, w I wasn't a flamenco singer. I I wanted to just learn and immerse myself in flamenco music and tie it in with my own heritage and with Arabic music and have it be a part of my voice. It just, I, 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 it wasn't intentional. I just wanted to learn it so much that it ended up coming through my own music um, with the similarities between flamenco and Arabic. Got it, got it. No, there, there are, and it's interesting because both styles have this, um, I, I keep calling it emotive quality, but there's something, there's probably another word for it that I'm missing out right now, where it is, in order to do it, in order to do it well, you kind of have to be in touch with your emotional self. You kind of like, and yeah. and um, I remember being in Barcelona at a flamenco show and I was talking to somebody, it's like, you can't fake it. You can't, like, no. you know, other artists will spot you and they'll go like, you're not doing it. It's just like, it's just not there. And this is in uh, both, uh, uh, both traditions. And, you know, in focusing with Sama, focusing on sacred music from all over the world and sacred brought, mostly intention is healing, transcendent. You kind of have to have that ability. And I always go like the up and down, like you kind of have to, from your heart to your mouth, to your, to, it's like it, there has to be this connection with it. And it's not easy music. You know, you think it's like, oh, it's simple, it scales. It's like, no, because the, the, the connection to the emotion has to be so real. And when you're like, if I'm not tearing up at a flamenco show, if I'm not tearing up at, um, you know, an Arabic music show, then something's missing there. Like it needs to hit me. And, you know, okay. I'm Eastern European. We're not like that emotional. But if that music doesn't do it for me, something's something is missing there and i would love your take on that because you know you went to berkeley and you know that is a great school but it is like the music school and they kind of like sometimes they can squeeze it out of you because you get so wrapped up in like are you doing this right and so how did you hold on to that because i'm hearing your music when i when I was before i was like she's got it she can actually bring that out you can tell that you're you're there you're connecting thank you um thank you for saying that um I do agree, you know, I think music school is, it can be great, but it can also um, teach you to analyze everything and be overly analytical. Um, and there was actually, um, someone coined the term music school syndrome, right? Where you can't sit and, and enjoy the music because you're analyzing it and wondering, is that, you know, what chord is that? Is that a, you know, a minor seven, flat five, you know, what is it? And instead of being like absorbed in it, um, Luckily, I did not lose that. <laughs> and um, I think flamenco and my own heritage, like Arabic music, really helped with that. Because like you said, you have to be present. You have to feel it. These are deep cultures, uh, very rooted in, uh, in feeling. And so you can't, not, you can't not feel it. If it's really just something that, that touches you, um, you have to be present in that moment. And I feel like that's what... I don't know, maybe correct me if you don't um, feel that way yourself, but I feel like that's why we go to music shows. That's why we go to concerts is to feel, just be present and let ourselves feel things and be vulnerable in a way that uh, is, can be exclusive to being in that space, right? So they do, they do, and, and it's missing right now. Like, it's so dramatic, like, and uh, there are political actions and others that are trying to save these stages, but particular styles, you know, styles such as flamenco, such as styles of Arabic music, Sufi music and others, the connection is so, it's like, you know where it came from and it's not that far away. It's like, you know, you just, it, there are tomes written about it. It's best recited in poetry, but it's the power of the voice, it's power of the instrument to actually have you reach and transcend so it's so you can go beyond what you're dealing with you're going beyond the issues that are happening right now and i think that's what's so vital for artists right now specifically such as yourself and others that are working in the space your music will help people 
deal with the reality of their lives right now. Not in a way of like forgetting it, like sadaje, but as in like, like working through it, like trying right. to get to, you know, what to give you the strength, the energy, the, the, that, that, um, ephemeral thing that helps you work through this. And so you Sonic can healing. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, me personally, that's one of the things that I feel my, my music, uh, I try to offer in the music is this sonic calm, this sonic healing and positive energy at a time where we really need it. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to mention one thing about flamenco and Arabic music, because there's a lot of similarities. Um, and in my own music, I perform, a, when, when I perform a lot, especially improvisation, there's, um, you know, what, you know, when you go to a flamenco show and they're, they're all like, ole, you know, mm -hmm. um, ole comes from uh, the Arabs, right? So um, even like if you're in a concert in Jordan, you'll hear people also um, shouting out, you know, Allah or Yalil yeah. or, you know, um, and actually Yalil is something that a lot of um, Arabic music uh, singers will will improvise over. Mind you, I myself am not a traditional Arabic music uh, performer. I'm more on the contemporary side. Yeah. Uh, but you can rec but definitely I recognize as well as anybody that um, those similarities, even when you hear Ole or, you know, uh, Yalil, uh, which you'll hear me singing. Um, and even, you know, like, Ojala, which means, oh, you know, I wish it comes from inshallah, like God mm -hmm. willing, um, that we use uh, in the Arab world. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, continuation and sharing of yes, musical. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I find now it's needed more than ever. Let's hear another song, please. Sure. So speaking of that, I'll perform. Um, it's completely improvisational. Um, I have a um, background of Qanun, uh, Yusuf al Mizgeldi from Morocco. And um, I recorded him in Sevilla, actually, in the south of Spain. Um, and this is a completely improvised piece. Um, and you'll hear some lel, um, you know, you hear me sing uh, over the word lel often. Awesome. And it's meant, salam means peace. So I hope that this improvisation, this piece will bring peace to anyone who's listening and feels that they need it. Thank you.
That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bara Siraj on Sama. Um, what are you thinking about when you're improvising like that? Like what, what, what goes through your mind? I'm not thinking actually. I'm just, I'm being, does that make sense? I'm being, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm being, I'm, I'm allowing everything that needs to come out, to come out to the surface. Um, so it's just being in a state of presence and, um, trying to tune in with the inspiration. Uh, and I feel that often when you're creating and when you're improvising, you cannot not be present, you know? You have to be in that state where you're receiving and transmitting. Um, there can't be, can't, like, there can't be calculations or um, thinking about the future or the past because you're, you have to be in the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's interesting because it's like, I know that often you'll be uh, interacting with your musicians, you'll be interacting with the audience, you'll be interacting with the room, you know, just how does your voice work, especially as a, as a vocalist and how you're presenting that. But it's always intrigued me with improvising uh, artists, especially in uh, either flamenco or Arabic traditions is like, what's the first thing? What's the first, maybe like, what's the first thing that you're feeling? And how are you riffing on that? And it's often... Uh, I was talking to somebody a while ago and they were like, you know, it kind of started with me with heartbreak. It's a classic story. I started writing songs. My heart got broken and I just kept thinking and it's about this and about this. And then my heart healed. And then I, what am I going to work with now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what, what is the, um, well, I'm, I'm curious is in like, you know, you're, what, what are you tapping into? What do you, what are you? What is the the thing? And I don't want to. I don't want you to give it away. And it's like maybe you don't know, but I'm just always curious because if you're improvising, you got to kind of start with something. And it's just what's the first thing? Um, that's so interesting. I mean, whether it's improvising or writing, um, I feel like you need to tune into wherever you are in not just like in the moment, but where you are in your life, right? So. This improvisation that I did might be di was different years ago, would be different in years. Um, but definitely, I mean, when I'm writing music and I'm writing, because I'm a songwriter um, and I do perform a lot of my own songs. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when I'm writing music, I'm looking for inspiration in anything and everything. And um, a lot of it comes from my own life, right? Um, that's why there's a lot of songs about distance because. Um, between my family spread out between Spain and Jordan and me being in the US, like I'm always missing someone. And mm -hmm. everyone can re relate now with coronavirus. We're oh, all yeah. missing someone, right? Um, so a lot of my songs would talk about like missing the, the person you love or missing your, yeah, miss, that feeling of missing, right? Or mm -hmm. not, um, you know, not having that loved one close to you. Uh, but I'm also a big empath, so if I hear a story or somebody's sharing experience with me, next thing you know, I'm writing a song about it as if it's happening to me. Um, and so, you know, that, I mean, right now, for example, I'm in the middle of uh, this amazing Palestinian writer, Susie, Susan Abul Hawa's uh, novel, Against the Loveless World. And I'm telling you, like, it's an amazing uh, novel, and I'm getting inspiration musically from it. Okay. Um, really beautiful. So anything and everything. Um, and sometimes it's, like, where you would least expect it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Perfect. Um, hopefully, April, um, it's In a Loveless World. Is that the name of the... Against the Loveless World. Against the Loveless World. Maybe April can put a link on this. And I want to do a couple of quick bits of thank yous. I want to thank Haifa. I want to thank Naba from Nepal, Leila, and others who are now uh, tuning in live. And I want to thank Seattle Theatre Group um, out of Seattle, obviously, and then live out of Bamako, who are also cross-streaming, too. This is awesome. Um what so you've got this song um uh, that's coming you've got a record um uh, that you're working on right. um i'm curious to you know um we have you on Bandcamp, yes yes people can and so you're still putting out you're still inspired you know oh, yeah. the, you're able to react to things and get that out and um you know i look forward to having you here i look forward to uh meeting you in reality and um and hearing you perform here and and following your career as you perform all over the world. It's really beautiful, it's really needed, and it's really beautiful transcendent music. Thank you for sharing it. 
Thank you, Derek. And thank you for having this platform where people can share their music and where you highlight um, many artists from around the world. That's really incredible you. what you're doing, especially thank in a time so where everything is closed and a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of artists um, want to be uh, on these kind of platforms and sharing their music. So thank you. Thank you for oh, supporting my pleasure. arts. My and, pleasure. And you know, I want to thank Sarah and April and everybody else that helps make this make this happen um uh, we're going to close with with um kalma and we introduced it a little bit it's this beautiful video um that you shot in new york at the what's the name of the theater united palace it's actually one of the oldest theaters in new york um that was built um in 19 well it might be it's at least 90 years old okay that's old the, that's yeah, good it's, yeah you know. it's one of the oldest and also biggest theaters in new york who are the musicians in this video so we can so, give them props? Yeah, so I'm performing with Andreas Arnold, who, I mean, we co-wrote the song together. Mm -hmm. um, he's on guitar and Adam Malouf on handpan. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, and it was filmed in New York. And it was, an, it was just a very intimate experience in a time where um, we were also trying to find our center. And now the song has uh, really taken on a, a new meaning. Um, oh, yeah. Because... There's so much uncertainty now for everyone all around the world um, that I feel the song resonates um, with a lot of people. And it's about trying to find your, your center, trying to find your calm, and also about being one with nature okay, and, that, um, and, and having that respect for nature. Yeah, more needed now more than ever. It's like, surprise, climate change is really a real thing. It's like, okay. Yeah. Um, hopefully, other artists such as yourself will help guide the way and ease the process. You know, um, when I started doing this, I was saying, like, look, it's change. And change is hard. Change isn't a uh, walk in a beach in Tulum. It's really hard. And this is what we're kind of going through as a as a species. And uh, And hopefully, we will come out of it wiser and more emotionally together. Farah, thank you so much for being here. Look forward to seeing you again in one form or another. We're going to finish with Kama. Um, this is Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. Thank you.
All right. Bara Siraj on Sama, Sales Chicken Music and Art. I'm Derek Mazzoni. Thank you so much for watching this live stream. We're back next Thursday, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time with Samir Langus, a Grammy nominated Ganawa um, uh, performer, singer, um, was in In of Ganawa doing some really amazing work right now that I'm so happy to share. I think it might be the first time. Uh, let's see, then we've got Chris Ekman. Uh, who is the founder of Glitterbeat Records, and then some more surprises as the months continue. Uh, we're here, and we're here for you. And uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, become our friend on Facebook as we live stream uh, transcendent music from all over the world. Peace. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. We're going to get through this really well. <music>